the flash of power, the gleam of oil. In the sky, the power of oil conquering the heights. On the sea, the might of petroleum pulsing in great engines of the liners that traverse the deep. On land, oil feeds the fiery furnace or drives the diesel engines along far-flung rails of steel. And on the open road, well, you know what makes your auto run. For millions of years, this source of power slept peacefully in the dark recesses of the earth until modern magic loosed the liquid energy from its subterranean prison. Great areas became forests of towering derricks. And here's how the petroleum forest grows. A cellar is dug, and a rotary table to turn the drilling stem and the bit is set in place. Round and round the rotary goes drilling deep down to oil. A steam engine drives the drilling mechanism. They're inserting a length of pipe, lengthening out the stem for deeper drilling. A new joint is waiting. Oil field workers are called drillers, roughnecks, roustabouts, rope chokers. The oil field treats our ears to odd and colorful names. Now the drilling stem has been lengthened, then round and round once more. Down through layers of sandstone, shale, limestone, down to astonishing depths. This well, 5,000 feet. Some 10,000, two miles into the earth. And then, after weeks of drilling, fighting against natural obstacles, the drill at last reaches the oil sand, porous rock, which holds the oil much as a sponge holds water. Next, the casing is lowered to the bottom of the hole and cemented in position. Then drilled through the oil sand, and a screen is installed at the base of the casing. The screen extends down into the oil sand. The oil flows through the screen, up through the small pipe tubing to the surface. So they've struck oil, and now the well must be cleaned of the mixture of drill mud and oil. Some wells flow of their own pressure. Others must be pumped, need power. The power is transmitted to groups of wells. The ever swaying rocker arm, the rhythm of pumping, the unceasing heartbeat of the oil fields. A 24 well hookup is the height of oil field power. Pumping black magic from two dozen drillings in the earth all at the same time, out of the ground. The oil is cleaned of natural gas or water, which is combined with it. Next, the petroleum starts on its way through a great network of pipelines. There are powerful pumping stations every 40 or 50 miles to keep it moving along the lines. The lines of pipe, alive with racing oil, run through forests and over plains to these silver disks. They're storage tanks where the oil rests briefly before it rides the waves in giant tankers. And they're masterpieces of shipbuilding. Those tankers of steel. The largest navigate the sea at 15 knots and carry five and one half million gallons of oil. The voyage of oil to the refineries. The refinery with its modern structures, technological towers, minarets of science, docks, office buildings, pageant of industry. Day after day, there is an endless flow of oil as the tankers discharge their liquid cargo. Unloading oil is a vast operation of piping through huge hoses. Discharged pipes on the vessel and receiving lines on the dock are connected, and a cargo of five million gallons is discharged in less than 24 hours. No two cargoes of crude oil are alike, so each boatload must be stored in different tanks, and each batch must be processed individually with laboratory tests to indicate the precise treatment for each. That is embodied science. Those masses of strangely wrought steel, forests of stacks, glowering and hissing boilers, leaping and winking fireboxes. Intense heat, the flames roar in the furnace, yet the oil flows so fast the heat does not scorch it. And scientists rest from the crude petroleum its tremendous power in the form of gasoline, 
and other fuel oils. And that's done in these towers called fractionating towers. They divide crude oil into the lighter and heavier parts. Those of different boiling points liquefy at different levels in the towers. Some lighter than gasoline liquefy at the top. Heavier parts liquefy further down. At the bottom are the heavy fuel oils or the raw materials from which lubricating oils are made. When increasing use of motor cars pyramided the demand for gasoline to extraordinary heights, scientists were called upon to devise new methods. How could a greater proportion of gasoline be extracted from the crude oil than that obtained from the fractionating tower alone? To meet this challenge, the scientists turn to products other than gasoline which are drawn from the crude, studied their molecules, and found a way to change them, to turn them into gasoline. The result was cracking. Let's look at a diagram of a cracking plant. Here we see how one part of petroleum that is not gasoline is converted into gasoline. Called gas oil, it is pumped through a pipe into a cracking furnace, heated to over 900 degrees under tremendous pressure. And the individual particles, molecules, are broken into smaller molecules, just as coal is broken under a hammer. If we could see one of those molecules, it would look something like this. The hotter the molecule gets, the faster it wiggles, until finally it wiggles so fast, it flies apart. The pieces shoot around at great speeds. They eventually find partners and form new and smaller molecules that look something like this. These smaller molecules are now no longer gas oil, but are gasoline of high-powered, noxious quality. Some of the gas oil molecules do not fly apart and must be separated from the gasoline. This is done in the bubble tower. Here the big molecules, which are not gasoline, are held back and come out at the bottom as a liquid. The gasoline goes up the tower as a vapor, comes out at the top, and is condensed into liquid gasoline. Gasoline that gives more power to you. Experiment is the key to it all, and this is the experimental laboratory. In the making of powerful motor fuel, the control of temperatures is of extreme importance, and it is measured to an accuracy of one hundredth part of one degree. Gasoline is broken down into over two hundred parts in that elongated tallness of glass, and each individual part is studied. The laboratory with its strange gleaming of new and unpredictable things. Here are created modern miracles with the chemistry of oil. Tank farm, to which the motor fuel goes from the refinery, and then out to the nation, by railroad tank car and by motor barge. Pipelines run their web-like nets under rivers, over mountains, carrying gasoline that goes into millions of gasoline tanks to generate billions of horsepower for the nation. Oil means horsepower in a horsepower-using world. Briefly, in four words, more power to you.